than how we can fill out. They, they, team, you know? Yeah. I don't know what that is. Cause the, yeah, because the, the dude that was on their team, the shark, he was trying to shoot three so bad. Yeah, I, and I you put, wasn't giving put him in a prime box. And he was like, I don't want, I don't want to take no float or no bed ring. Yeah, I put, him, I put him in a prime box. He wouldn't have it. And then when you disconnected, your player was still him up. <laughs> I saw that. I saw that. I was looking on the, oh, I, I was looking on the, uh, I was watching your stream and I saw him hit that, uh, limit, limit of the strange three. I said, ugh, even my hey, I still out there right. giving him buckets. Yeah, buckets. I said, he's giving a bucket. Is he locking them up too? I said, I know he's pissed. How dare this nigga make a build as that OP? I don't know how. I don't know how he could be coming in the streams to be one of A can I join. Like when Bones came in the GTA, hey, can I join y'all? And this nigga like 96, like six uh, level 96. Yeah, man. Yeah. Under 10. Like, why would you even want to play? With I think it's because a lot of people are grievers and a lot of people already have established crews or established people that they play with. So when you don't have one, or let's say all his friends don't play anymore or have gotten bored with the game. Right. You're, you're in search of people to play with. That's how that's how these games are set up. You know what I'm saying? Like it's set up for you to find people and to network and to find more people to play with. Like 2K is not a game that you play by yourself. Right. In multiplayer, like if you, you can't find any multiplayer game that's set up for you to be a long ranger. Right. Is so, it like that in Red Dead too? Yeah, in Red Dead you can set up posses and games. So you can be running around. Yeah, you can have like a whole crew. I think the posse, you can have a posse of like, I think eight to ten. And you can just run around and uh, raise havoc. You can be bounty hunters. You can do, uh, they, here, here's something they introduce like heist and stuff like um, Grand Theft. Because the game promotes networking and playing with other people. And you get more rep and more money, the more people you have. Of right. course, the harder, the harder whatever mission you want is. But that's the way it's set up. Um, right. That's what I was telling you about uh, GTA. Like, you can get on GTA and be by yourself and rob people. But you ain't gonna really make too much money doing that. Like, right. you'll be literally getting getting it from the bottom of the hood because you rob somebody, <laughs> they got sixteen dollars. Like, twenty nine. You do all their work for twenty nine dollars. It's like, what what am I doing this for? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, but I'm gonna tell you though, like, when you actually do missions with people that you are used to doing missions with. The shit's fun. Right. Because there's certain missions where you have to have, you have to actually go in with a strategy. I remember there's one mission where you got to steal some nerve gas. No. In the story mode, you got to steal nerve gas from there. But in the mission, you got to go there somewhere, but there's like bodyguards and shit set up. And you have to take them out silently. Because any move, the alarm sets off and you fail that mission, you got to start from scratch. So like I remember one time I, we had a full full four man crew. We went in and it was like, look, we're gonna post up in these various spots. You take this scientist, you take this one, you take this one, you take this one, and on three we all shoot at the same time. Shit was so clean. It was like one, two, three. Everybody shot at the same time. All the bodies dropped. Like, oh, let's get it. Let's get it. Yeah. So like that. It that's I said. It that's what that's where the fun is. Is actually get with people that. You, no, no different than 2K. Get, right. get people you have chemistry with, running through the mission, running through the heist, repping up, leveling up. And once you get to a certain level, once y'all get your chemistry, then y'all can take on other people. Right. Like, you can set up, like, my boy Blaze, he been trying to get me part of his crew, but he, this nigga ain't never on. And when he is on, yeah, like, he don't play, so fuck it. But, um, he's talking about, like, there's a crew that, that he's, that him and his crew is a rival with. Like, whenever they online, they go at it. Right. But they all high levels. They all got helicopters and jets and all that shit. So when when they in the same lobby and they see somebody from the other crew, it's on. That's hilarious. You know what I'm saying? So but they how, how do they know what they look like? It's not so how much do you know what somebody's crew is. Because like when you go to the um, what's it called? The um, when you press, I think it's when you press down on the D-pad in the top um. Left hand corner yeah. shows all the people who's in the lobby. Next to it, it shows the abbreviation of their crew name. Uh, so you can go in there and you can see. Uh, let me see how many people in this lobby real quick. And you can see it. If you happen to see that person, it's like, oh, that's that one nigga from such and such. Yeah. Where, where my niggas at? Oh no. <laughs> and then you can send invites to your other niggas that's online. Like, hey, such and such is here. Let's get them. And they all get online. Or like that person might be doing a mission. 
where like they're doing like one of the CEO missions or the MC, motorcycle club missions, the MC missions, and like when you do those missions, or it could be the nightclub, any of the missions are set up when you have like properties, when you have to um, do the illegal activities, you have to transport um, packages from one side of the town to the next. Everybody in the lobby can see you transport. Right. How does that show up? Is that show up as like a little? I have, I don't exactly know yet. It's been so long since I've done it. I haven't done one yet, but I just know it does show up because you when you do those missions. It puts you in a public lobby. You can't be in, pa- in, in passive mode. Yeah. So it, it puts you out there on Front Street. And then it's on the people in the lobby. It's at their discretion if they want to attack you or not. Now, everybody's leveling up. Nine times out of ten, you're not, not gonna say nine, seven times out of ten, you're not really going to find nobody that's going to fuck with you. You might have that one person. They're like, I'm going to fuck that shit up. Because I, I remember I was doing one, and I'm doing it by myself. I'm riding. I'm on the little expressway on the highway. Some nigga sitting up on a mountain. Shoots me with a rocket launcher. For real? I'm, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. I'm wasted. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> such kill you. I'm like, oh, man. At that time, I'm a low level. I said, I could go after this nigga. But I'm by myself. Right. I'm limited weaponry. I don't have no fast cars. And if he shot me from the top of a mountain with a rocket launcher, he's holding. So I'm, I'm going to leave him alone. I'm just going to go to another lobby and I'm, I'm going to chill on that. But like I said, it's other stuff. And like a lot of the missions are so action packed. Trust me, it's a lot of fun. There's, like, there was one that I was trying to get us to do the other night where um, it's a Martin Madrazo mission. When you, you start out, you're hopping the whip, y'all go behind this building, there's a van, you got to get the dope out the van. But it's surrounded by bodyguards. So you gotta shoot all the bodyguards, kill all the bodyguards, get the dope, then run to uh, an abandoned industrial site that has like um, a code that you have to hack into the code, get the access to it. Uh, and when you're doing that, there's bodyguards and lynch and henchmen trying to shoot you, kill you, to keep you from getting the code. So you got one person who's trying to do the code. And while he's doing the code, he can't shoot nobody because right. he's in the computer screen. So you pretty much gotta protect him. After you do that, you gotta go to the airport, and there's some dope in the back of a hangar. So you gotta go right all the way to the airport, get there, and then you gotta kill all the bodyguards, get the dope in the back of the hangar, and then take it to Martin Madrazo's crib, which is in the hills. And like I said, the whole time you're doing this, like, the henchmen are after you. So it's like, it, trust me, it's fun, because when we, when we get to the airport, I used to get in the helicopter. I get in the helicopter to float, and I just start shooting inside the hangar. Just killing everything in the hangar. Somebody picks up the dope. I land the helicopter, hop in the helicopter real quick. They hop in the helicopter, we fly off. But at the same time, this whole time, people are shooting at you. All right. So it, it trusts me. It, you was like, oh, I like fighting. You like, you ain't seen shit. The highest, same way, robbing the banks and all of that. The last one is the shit. Like the last mission, you got robbed a uh, main bank in the middle of LA. Quote unquote. And um, once you rob that, like, instant five stars, police are everywhere. For real? And it's just like nonstop. There's a, they used to, I don't know if they patched it, it was a glitch where, like, you could, if someone had a safe house around the corner, you go to their safe house, and you go to their safe house, like, the stars are disappearing. Right. For a brief second until you get in your car and ride and they pop back up. There's a little route you could take. But anyway, but that's how, like I said, the game said, that's one, you gotta, you gotta break into a prison. And that's nonstop gunfire. So like it, the the missions ain't as mundane as they start out. Right now they kind of start out because you leveling up, it's getting you used to the controls, used to the game. But as you level up, the missions the harder and harder they get, the more complicated they get because you're supposed to have better weapons or whatnot, you know. So yeah, it's trust me, it's and like it, it is hard. It takes the the controls definitely take a while to get used to. I didn't like playing in first, first person mode until I started playing very recently. Now I, I do all my shooting in first person. And for me, it's just more, I don't know, more in, engaging. Especially when I'm running up on the gun. You can see him put the clip in. And just running. I, I, I love it. Then when I hop in the whip, I'm in third person. Because right. I'm not driving in third person. I'm driving in first person. This is for the birds. <laughs> it is, it's for the birds. So you so why did you force a trade off of the Lakers? 
I was getting bored, man, and I, I was going to make another bill, which I did make them, but I, I don't feel like grinding them. Um, I had the VC to make them. I made them. I got, I think I got them to like an 88 overall, and I realized like he does not shoot nowhere nearly as good as this one does. Right. And this he one, was a small forward? Small forward, playmaking primary, shot creating secondary. Because also, look, I ain't trying to do this again either. Where's it at? Those are my park hot spots. I didn't even know they had park hot spots. Yeah, you have to get you gotta you gotta get hot hot spots in each mode. That's my pro end, but I've only played three games. Right. The NBA of course is gonna be lit all but right. for park. I'm murdering out there, fam. Right. You be hitting, I'm like that. <laughs> I'm murdering out there. So it's off. like, do I really want to build a whole another one and nah, I was like, you know what? Let me chill. I wasted that VC. Only realized like nah. Now if they make it like what you think two K eighteen where I could have like a six nine shot creating playmaker that could be a boost, I'm all the way in. But six six just ain't tall enough. Right. It's just, it's just like the build I got right. and he don't shoot as well. Right. But if I had a six nine that was had an eighty eighty five mid range seventy five three if six nine yeah I go for it. Because he needs to be out there long and lanky, Brandon Ingram. Because I take him down to the lowest weight. And I just run run with him. But, but yeah, when I looked at that, I said, shit, I'm killing out here in the park. <laughs> so, you when you when you hop on, you just hop straight into the games? I, you never, like, just go to the park? Typically, I hop into an NBA game to warm up, get my shot down. Um, just to get the muscle memory going. Uh, because, you know, I just playing with randoms, which I ain't played with randoms much since I on the Xbox, but I know on PlayStation, playing with randoms, like, you gotta be warmed up. One thing I've noticed about the Xbox community, different than the PlayStation community, no one complains about the, the aggressive way I play. Like, on the team? Like, yeah, I'm on the park. Like, when I play on park, like, if I got the shot, I'm taking it. Right. I'm a shot creator, so some shots ain't going to look like they go in. But the thing about shot creators, if you have an inch of daylight, right, you pull that bitch. You know what I'm saying? And I'm doing well. On PlayStation, even if you're doing well, they're going to pitch. Pass me the ball. Oh, you, you shot that? Oh, I can't even uh, Pass me the ball. Right. Oh, you ball hogging. Like, no, dude. This is, I am a scoring guard. Right. I'm going to pass you the ball if I see it. But if I don't see it, I'm not passing. I'm not forcing no passes. Sorry. And, like, that's what they used to people doing. Is what they call uh, throwing Steve instead of throwing Scaries. Steve is like, you didn't you blind pass. Oh, scary is like a scary pass. Like, I'm not. My goal as a guard is to, you know, you know my goal as a guard. Like, limit turnovers. Right. Get assists. And get buckets. Right. Like, when I, if I come down the court and y'all ain't open, I have to create. I'm not going to stand there and wait for you to get open. Right. I'm going to come down the court. I'm going to shake. I'm going to move. I'm going to dribble a little bit. I ain't going to do all that spinning and shit. Right. But I'm going to dribble a little bit. I'm going to move. I'm going to do a couple moves. If ain't nobody open and the nigga ain't guarding me, I'm either going to the rack or I'm pulling some type of fader. Like, this is how right. it, and they, a lot of times, randoms will complain. And that's it's the way 2K built um, people to play like everybody's a superstar in my career. When you get in the park, you're not a superstar, man. Like if you are a big man and right. you your pure post score, you're not really supposed to take mid ranges. Right. You definitely ain't supposed to be shooting threes. So like if I come down the court and you are waiting, like way high post, and you're just standing there, you're in the way. I right. need you on the low block, or I need you setting the screen. And cutting. Right. Like they they just gonna stand there on the high post or stand there at the top of the key. Or stand in the corner. Tell them to pass the ball. No. Just cause two K allows you to shoot don't mean I trust you. Right. And just because on YouTube these niggas be hitting what they say is high clips of corner threes don't mean that your ass is gonna hit them. Right. Them niggas play every day professionally. This is what they do, that's what they get paid to do. Nigga, you just don't be fucking around. Yeah. You know, so. 
Yeah, no one's been like, oh, I can't believe you did this. No, I, it, it, that helps me play better because I ain't got to worry about second guessing myself. Right. I'm just out there like, just play the game. Just play basketball. Yeah. It'll yeah. work itself out. You know what I'm saying? And, and I, I think, think we win. And I think it's it's because you have you play basketball. You have basketball knowledge. I've played basketball. I have basketball knowledge. It seems like takeover as well. Right. Has played basketball. Has basketball knowledge. They know their roles. We know our roles. We know what we can and we can't do. Right. Like a lot of athletic finishers, they don't go for alley oops. They don't cut to the basket. They going for some reason they want to shoot corner threes. Right. But they stand at the top top of the wing. They want you to pass the ball and they want to triple threat and drive. Like no, like right. You primarily primarily on open floor build. Right. Like, if you catch it on the wing, you get triple, triple threats because I got stuck and I had to pass. Right. But if we get the ball and we come down the court, your job is to run to the basket. Right. Run, run, not every time. to the corner right. or to the wing. And that's what you get with a lot of randoms. Like, they don't play their build like they're supposed to be played. So, like, I'll grab, uh, somebody get the rebound. They pass it to me. We run it down the court. Everybody runs for threes. Right. It's like, come on, I need someone to cut. Because if you cut in and I cut this way and I'm cutting like I'm going towards the basket, eventually the dude is going to come up on me, especially the way I score. Right. Like my my job as a playmaker is to draw people in so I can kick it out. People don't think that way. They, I don't know, man. It just pisses me off. That's why I, I don't. Oh, yeah. Welcome to the podcast, by the way. I'm like, what's good? Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm your host, Leonidas, King Leonidas, sitting here with uh, my dear friend, uh, one half of Wax On, Wax Off. <laughs> <laughs> one, half on, one half of Sweet and Sour. I say that because, you know, on, on, I, I made that name up the other day on Grand Theft because I'm sweet because my, 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 my guy is like, Chocolate black man, your guy's Miyagi, so sweet and sour. I don't know, it just came out that way. And uh, I don't know what number of podcasts this is. It's probably like number 12, honestly, when it all boils down to how many we recorded. Yeah. Um, Apple still hasn't gotten back to me. Well, yeah, I don't know what's going on. I heard they, they're trying to do something different with the podcast, so that might be why I haven't heard anything. Because, you know, they're late to the podcast game. So they're trying to do something innovative. I don't know what that means. Spotify still. Well, I heard from Spotify. I got to get with Pippa and get a whole new email or something to link to our show so I can submit it to Spotify. Link to our show? Like on YouTube? No, like on Spotify. Like, you know, not, not an actual like website link, but to, to link, like to connect. Yeah. Because like the email that they have now is an email. I don't know. I don't recognize the email. It's owned by, I guess, Pippa. I don't know why, but when I submitted to Spotify, it, the um, information is going to that particular email. So I sent Pippa a couple of emails like, hey, how do we resolve this? So I get my stuff on Spotify. So we waiting on that. So what do people mostly listen to podcasts on? I mean, you can listen on. You can listen to I know it on. They got a lot of different platforms, a lot of different apps that. Mainly, I know of is Spotify and Apple. Um, I know my me myself personally. I listen to Spotify and Apple because Apple, of course, has a has the podcast podcast app. They were oh, on the phone. Yeah. yeah, that's what I usually listen to, or I listen to it on YouTube. Yeah, I I listen. To, I haven't really listened that much on Spotify. I just started probably like a couple of days ago, but once we once we start recording more regularly, you know what I'm saying, and having more quality uh, podcasts, mm-hmm. we're gonna need to be able to have it flowing smoothly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, that's weird that they got like some strange email address. Yeah, that that threw me for a loop because I kept trying to figure out why I wasn't getting that, and I'm like, why am I not getting that from these niggas? And I kept trying to send it and I think the third time I tried to send the third because so I was sending them episode by episode and I think the third or fourth episode I sent I sent one of the first ones again because I saw that it was the wrong podcast and, and I tried to put our our email in there it was like, it was like uh, 
this show or is connected with another email, contact your host, yada, yada, yada. So I emailed them and now I'm waiting for them to email me back because I want to get that squared away because I would like for us to be on podcasts and Apple. I'm not too much concerned about any other platforms. YouTube, of course, is there. We got that one. Like, that's cool, but a lot of people are not going to listen to it on YouTube because YouTube is not made for listening. Right. But it's a good way to get started. But mostly Spotify and Apple is what I want to be part of. So eventually it's going to it's going to work. It's just about keeping um, consistent and keep moving and keep posting and keep putting it out there until, you know what I'm saying, something goes. Because right. Um, right now we don't have anything to like share to people. Like, oh, you want to finance? Go here. You know what I mean? Yeah. The only thing we can do is direct it to YouTube and not everybody pays for YouTube. Because there are there are people who pay for their YouTube channel and they can like turn the podcast on, but have their phone like yeah, on go to a different app. Yeah, and yeah. still listen. But for the most part, you can't if you're not paying for YouTube. But at the same time, I think this is a good thing because we can build a catalog. Right. So eventually, when we do get those platforms, we we'll already have a nice catalog so we can go in and actually listen and follow and see what we're about. It, it's kind of sucks though because I really wanted this podcast to be comment driven and without the viewers, right? There's no comments, so we'll see what happens, man. I just think you know, as long as we keep moving and keep doing it, it it's gonna pop. Because I think about the a particular podcast I listened to, I didn't start listening to it until they was already, I think, three years in, and they was talking about their struggles. Yeah, and I think it. Right at four, four and a half years of them doing the podcast, they get an actual deal with Spotify. Right. Yeah, so they got a deal with Spotify now. So Spotify pays them. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it's just it's just a testament of you having to pay your dues. You right. know what I'm saying? I say that every time I turn on the stream, is that you know I'm not really looking to blow up right now. I'm just putting in the work. Right. I'm just putting it, getting the, uh, what's that, what, getting the hours in. Right. You know what I'm saying? Paying my dudes, getting the hours in, getting some streams up, getting it posted so I have a catalog so you can see I've been doing this for a while. Uh, the good thing about the streaming platform we're doing, we've been picking up followers like crazy. Yeah, it is. I think that's the reason why I'm going to stick with that for right now. Sure. And I'm going to set, I'm going to write down a goal on how many followers I want. And then I'm going to try to carry them from, Mixer to Twitch. Yeah. I and, feel like eventually, once, once we get a certain amount, yeah. it's easier to transition to yeah. different platforms, whether it be Twitch. And hopefully by then, hopefully by then, like, I'll have a better laptop and then I can stream both at the same time and really. And the good thing is, I think it is a good idea that we decided to stream at the same time. Right. Yeah. I think it, yeah, I think it bounces each other. Because it was crazy because, like, the other night when we was playing, Takeover was on yours. Yeah. And then he came to mine and followed, and then he took some of them lightning bolts. I don't know what them damn things yeah. are, but he gave me some of them lightning bolts. And then uh, Durag Joe did the same thing. So I just got to get used to playing and looking down at the chat. Right. That's something that I ain't got used to yet. Looking down at that chat. I missed I missed the dude. I had, he was a potential follower, yeah, but yeah, I missed yeah. him. Yeah, I'll be missing him too. But I mean that's gonna happen anyway, especially once you get big. So right. But that's also why you you get people like moderators and stuff like that, people who come to the stream on a regular and they monitor your chat for you. Right. So yeah. Yeah, I think Mixer might be the best way to go. Yeah, I think I, I decided Mixer was the best way to go because it just started in in 2016. So it's the baby of all streaming right. services, and. I know this last E3, Xbox was heavy on doing better and getting exclusives, doing better at um, getting better games. And I think once they do that, especially when the next gen comes out, a lot of people will be streaming on Mixer. A lot of people are going to get the um, new platform. And once that happens in the the actual... um, flagship games or the exclusives come out if we're on here and we pick one to play 
people are going to come check it out. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't play Grand Theft Auto necessarily because I really want to. I know it's one of the top ten most viewed games. I think 2K is like top within the top 20. And I did all that. I read all this stuff. Like, I didn't want to do Fortnite. Right. I could have jumped on Fortnite, but there's so many people watching Fortnite. I might not ever get a view. Right. So I said, no, let me do something else that's not within the top five. And I think Grand Thefts, depending on what time of day Grand, Th- Grand Theft could be top five, but I know what the time of day I usually get on, it's within the top ten. And you got to get stragglers come in. Mm-hmm. And they're going to kind of look and see what's going on. And then that's how, but within the week of getting on Mixer, got 12 followers. Hopefully that keeps, you know, that number keeps going up. I think right, right, by the time I get 500 or so, that's when it'll be time to like, hey, we going to stream on Twitch this night. Yeah. Come on over to Twitch. Check me out real quick. Because if they got Mixer, they got Twitch. Yeah, it's all a part of the console, um, and um, it just build from there. I don't think, as far as YouTube, I think I did strike. I'm chilling for a second until I figure out <laughs> until I figure out the um, the under the hood shit. Because I could have swore I muted all my music on 2K. It played no more than like seven seconds of 18 on a video. I'm watching the video back. So I can see how it sounds. Right. So I know when it is right, you know, right when the game starts. Yeah. It was playing that little snippet, and then poof, the game starts. Like, they, hey, this is er, you know, and it's like that's all they play, and then no more than five minutes later, I get an email. Strike. And I'm like, what? what? Yeah. I ain't even. I said, you know what? Let me chill on YouTube for a second until I get this going. And plus, I'm. I'm Kind of waiting on some exclusives as well, and I, I just need I need an editing program, man. Like, yeah, the one I I don't even be editing that much because the what I what I would use the Windows Movie Maker, it's not as in, de- in detail as how I would want to edit the video. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's one reason why sometimes I don't need that. Most times I don't need to edit my video. But I said, I've also been watching a lot of videos here lately, and I've been watching them differently. I watch how they cut, right, like, and and how they do it, and I could tell that they're taking two hours, right, of gameplay, and they strengthen it. Plus, also, my mic, like, my mic picks up picks up everything. So um, I think until I get a boom arm, I'm gonna kind of hold off as well because it picks up the fan from the laptop. It picks up the fan from the Xbox. Yeah, headset mic. No, oh, this, this mic. Because when you when you're when you're recording the gameplay on Elgato, you can't use the commentary from this from your headset. There's a whole nother button for commentary that uses your your Yeti, Damn. and the Yeti picks up yeah. everything. So not only does it have the silent noise buzz, like the back the side the background silence, which is like loud yeah. already. It has the fan from the laptop and the uh, Xbox fan going, and it's just too much. I'm going to get an interface, a boom arm, I want a bigger desk, and once I get that, I actually get into the editing of the videos and all of that. For right now, though, I think streaming is my main thing. Yeah, streaming, streaming seems to work in the, in the beginning, I think. So, how'd you like Rami? Uh, Rami was Rami, Rami was dope. But when I seen when you sent me the trailer, I knew it was gonna be dope. I just didn't know where to watch it. I didn't. It was on Hulu, so I was like, all right, I don't got Hulu. And I, I knew it was gonna be dope. It, it was just a matter of time or a matter of when I was gonna watch it. Plus, I wanted to wait and watch it with my wife. You know what I'm saying? So. Once I got, once I was able to get, you know what I'm saying, to 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 the place where I could watch it, we watched it and it was dope. You know what I'm saying? She liked it, I liked it. I think I watched, I think I watched like the first two or three episodes. I think, man, I think I watched the first four episodes. I watched the first four episodes. The last episode I watched, and the first time we watched it was a kid when he was a kid, which I wasn't really, 
I was like kind of slept on that. It was the one with the dreams, right? Yeah, with the dreams, with Osama, the strawberry. That shit was hilarious, though, fam. (laughs) Okay. The strawberries? Yeah, so Osama was sitting at the kitchen table and it's like, it's like, I was like, is that Osama been lying? (laughs) This is Diddy, ain't it? (laughs) What's he doing? Yeah, so, but there was some, it was like, it was refreshing. Like, the show was very refreshing. It's, I think it's refreshing because it gives the average American more insight on how human we are. Right. Because the news I have you to believe that we are these ticking time bombs of a psychotic killer. Yeah. And that's not what we're about. For one thing, people don't know the religion. And then they don't know we're just regular people. We have the same problems and the same issues and are in the same situations as any other American. Yeah. So I, it was very refreshing, especially when he was dating a little Jew- Jewish chick. And uh, she went to take the dope. And he went take it. Yeah, yeah. And then he looks up and she's getting a shower with some other dude. Yeah. And yeah. then the, the, the brother at the mosque, the white dude, that was like, yeah, yeah, I can. You know, I was uh, I was this girl. She was like, "You want this ass?" And I was like, "No, I don't want this ass." He said, "What, I can? <laughs> you turned on the ass?" He said, "Yeah." And then, then when he dropped the hadith, I said, "Oh, they dropping hadith in the show. That's what I'm yeah, talking about." Yeah. Like, I love that man. Like, I might have to go back and watch it again. Yeah, it's that just on GP. And then when he went to uh, Africa, uh, yeah, went to Africa with, with the Egypt. Africa with the Egypt, and his cousin kept saying, "Nigga," he said, "You know that's offensive, right?" <laughs> he said, "What? Why is it offensive? I'm from Egypt. I'm right. in Africa. I am a nigga." <laughs> <laughs> I said, "Facts, facts. You can't get mad at that man." Right, right. He gave you facts. Now the whole cousin thing was kind of weird. The cousin thing, I was talking. About Don't get me about wrong. That. Don't get me wrong. Like I went to family reunions and seen a cousin. Didn't know she was my cousin. I'm like, damn, who is that? That's your cousin. I think that happens. Shit, and everybody, because you know what I'm saying. But to get that when, close, mm-mm. when I was like, when I was talking to my wife last night, I, was, I just kept saying like, he kissed his cousin. Like I didn't think for a minute, I didn't think it was gonna happen. But then. The way she reacted, she didn't be like, well, we're cousins, and then, like, walk off or something, or smack him. Like, I was like, oh, this might actually go down. And then, you know, once they once they did get close, I was just like, man, this is it's crazy, because it's like, on one hand, when you think about it, you know, we always talk about, man, they're picking the people down in the South, kissing their cousins, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, you can have birth defects and all this stuff, you know, the, the chances of it increasing. And then you think of it on another hand, it's like, well, we all come from the same person. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So eventually, down the line, we're related. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So, I think it's more so also it's, it's culture. Like, yeah. That was, that was, I know in the days of the Prophet Salaam, it was nothing to get married to like a second or third cousin. There wasn't genetics. There wasn't, um, it wasn't like a level of like research and proven facts of um, how what can affect what. Yeah, birth defects and all of that. So like they didn't think of it that way. And I think just, just here in America, that's just always been taboo. You don't date your cousin. Like, but even though the way America was was founded and most rich families still to this day in America, people are marrying their kids off to their cousins to keep the money in the family. They ain't gonna tell you that. But they still do. I mean, hell, it's just coming out now to all the politicians, the shit that are in the, into the damn sex trade. And uh, for the record, I'm going to try not to cuss as much. I was listening to one of the podcasts, and I was like, damn, I do cuss a lot. Maybe I need to tone it down just a tad bit. <laughs> just a tad bit. Like, I, I, once I get yeah. going, I once can't you help. rewatch or re-listen to something, like if somebody can comment on one of my videos on YouTube, like, man, he said, you know what I'm saying? Like, every other time, like, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a drinking game. Take a shot every time he says, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, damn, that's tough. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, 
I think his, his name is Joe Epstein. Big guy. He was a big lobbyist. I can't even tell you. Can't remember exactly what he did, but I know he's in jail now for being a part of a child sex trafficking ring. Hmm. And one of the victims stepped up and said Trump was a part of it. So I know when that nigga Trump get out of office, he's in some shit. Only thing that's saving him now is the fact that he's president. I watched the uh, whole Mueller report the other day, no, no Mueller hearing the other day. Uh, obstruction of justice. Uh, they might even try to hit it with conspiracy. So, yeah. But at the same time, he's an affluent, rich, white male. And uh, most affluent, rich, white males have connections. And that's how they get. But that's how, how Joe, Joe, Joe Epstein, whatever his name is, got off the first time. Because it ain't the first time he's gotten caught up with um, sleeping with underage women. However, the, the reason why I bring up this point is. In those circles, that is not taboo. That's what them niggas do. Yeah. It's, and here, now after they have allowed the LBGTQ community to be uh, more openly um, themselves, what did you think was going to follow, America? The pedophiles are going to say that that's not their choice, that they're born that way. Yeah, I seen somewhere that was. And eventually they're going to make that legal. Yeah, and what like you're going to do about like it? Like it's a sexual preference. Yeah. And I also bring that up just to segue into don't you ever in your life talk about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. For one thing, y'all don't have all the information. For two, even if Aisha, right along, Anha, was six, nine years old, no one during that time said anything. And that's a big if she was, because there are some high that said she was 19, 18 years old. But if she was, no one said, hey, that's messed up. The Quraysh, the ones who despised the prophet, would definitely have been the ones yeah. who would have spoke up. And I say that because here in America, marrying underage girls is as American as apple pie. In California, I think the legal age at one time was 12. They just raised it to like 16, not, not, not too long ago. Massachusetts is another place where the legal age to marry, the legal age of consent to marry a girl was like 11 or 12. Y'all got a lot of nerve. I, I, I lost a lot of Facebook friends. We had a debate years ago about that. I told them straight out, I said, you look further, you look about, like down your line in your family. Far enough, one of your great 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 grandmothers was probably nineteen years old when she got married to the to the great 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 grandfather who was twenty, and it wasn't looked down upon. That's how they did in the South. That's how most of y'all motherfuckers are here. It's because one of your grandmothers had grass on the field. They said play ball because in their age as soon as the as soon as a girl bleeds she's a woman if she bleeds she can breathe they marry her off and that age varies yeah that's right so if she's 9 years old and she has a period she's getting married and who's she getting married to 9 times out of 10 somebody who's 18 to 20 she has babies she stays at the house while the while the man goes out and works I, I just got to put that out there. It's something that I was thinking about the other day. Like, how dare y'all? But I think it was, I was watching a, a, a lecture where some ex-Muslim was saying that the Quran promotes pedophilia and all of that. I was like, for one thing, it's wrong. Because it, it's not, it does not promote that. For two, man has been doing that shit for years, man. Any culture you go into, there's men who's marrying underage girls. And it's not because a lot of them are um, pedos. It's because the way they are set up, once a woman has a period, once a girl has a period, she's a woman. It's time for her to bear children. And it got shit to do with society and none of that shit. It's procreation. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just giving you the facts. For anybody say that King Leonidas it's saying you can sleep under, and that's not what I'm saying. Don't take me out of context. 
I'm saying that it has always been since time immemorial when a woman has a period, she's able to have kids. And when she's able to have kids, they marry off. And how do you have kids? It ain't no stork, nigga. Just saying. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so the cussing thing on the Rami thing threw me for a loop. But there was a lot of great episodes in that, I feel like. My other funny, my other favorite episode was when he was in the car with the Muslim mom. And she was trying to get it in. Bro. And he wasn't trying to get in. And she said, what is up with you Muslim men who think that we don't want the same thing that the other girls want? And he just like, huh? I said, I just bust out laughing and started clapping so hard because I remember before I got married to my wife, there was a brother who was messing with a girl who, I get that, at that time she was Muslim. And he felt bad because they did something. And I'm looking at him like, I told the brother, I said, Nigga, this is America, man. Like, we don't do that here. Don't feel bad. That's what you come from. Yeah, I can see that. The way we get to know people in America is we test drive shit. That's just how we do it. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying that is our culture. People date. We don't have Wally's. We don't have wards. You meet somebody. You 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 feeling something. There's some chemistry there. Y'all go out on a date. Y'all go home. If the biology pretty much states that eventually y'all gonna sleep with each other, but you can try not to. But as long if you keep going to the barbershop, you gonna get your hair cut. Yeah. But eventually y'all gonna get it in. Yeah. And I was like, I was talking to my wife, and she was just saying, we was just saying, like, that's a loose situation for Rami because if. He just goes up on her and just starts kissing her at night and does all this stuff. She's like, oh, my God, what's wrong with you? Mm-hmm. You're supposed to be Muslim. That's a L. Mm-hmm. But if, you know what I'm saying, if he did what he did, that's another L. Yeah. So, yeah. But he should have known she was down with the shits just off the way her cousin acted. Because her, her, her cousin was acting all super tough. But then we was like, I'm going to show you. I'm going to take him to the club. Y'all have a good night. And then we was like, just be yourself. He should have known then she was down with the shits. Yeah, yeah. And it was just... And if it happened, it happened. This is also very eye-opening for all the uncles and aunties out there Man. who act like they don't want to marry their kids off to nobody, not knowing their kids is already out here fucking. It's, it's a lot going on out here. This is America. This ain't the... Oh, and I'm not... Let's keep, keep it all the way real. We're going to segue into another stock topic off of this. It's the same way in Saudi. Like, like why when he went to Egypt. Everybody keeps thinking when you go overseas, like Islam is different. No, like it's 2019. It's 2019. Motherfuckers are going to parties, they drinking, they 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 fucking, they doing all that shit. It's Even happening. over there. It's happening. Unless they throw you into some little village where there's no electricity, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the days go by super slow, you ain't got no social media, that's it's happening, bro. Like when he went over there, bro, and he was he was drinking water. He's like, bro, you drinking water out the tap? Like, you gonna be sick. You gonna be messed up tonight. And then he does a line of coke. Like, like what, what, what's going on? <laughs> I can't yep. drink water, but you, you know, but you can snort coke. And that just that segues that segues into Nicki Minaj having a show over there. How come she can't have a show over there? So what is Saudi Arabia? So what? This is supposed to be a Christian country. Christian country. There's half naked women out everywhere. Do you think it's gonna be different over in Saudi? Do you nah. know who Abu Rasasa is? It's just it's just the way of the times, and I feel like a lot of uncles, aunties that come from back in in the original country from overseas, back in whether it be the forties, fifties, sixties, even seventies, like it's it's not like that over there no more. No, it's not. You know what I'm saying? They basically the little brothers of America. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and it's tough, man. It's tough. And especially a lot of people think their kids is growing up a certain way like they did over here. But you're not with your kid 24-7. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You don't see what apps, what, what your kids doing on their phones. You know what I'm saying? Their laptops, their iPads. Not only that, I think people forget how it is when they grow up. <coughs> you want to fit in. You want to be a part of. No one wants to be alienated. Right. 
it's one thing. You, it, it's something that's subconscious that your family is always going to be there for you. Your family's always going to support you no matter what. When you go out in these streets, it's a totally different story. Right. And especially in America where being Muslim is the least popular thing you can be pretty much. Yeah. So, and it's, it's, a, it's even harder for the women. Because you expect them to wear your job out there. That's walking around with a sign like I'm Muslim. Like yeah. you know what I'm saying? A lot of guys, you can't tell they're Muslim unless they got a kufi on. And they super hot with it too. Like yeah, like you can't tell. They they walking around in J's. You know what I'm saying? They got suits on. They got collar shirts on. And then they got the nerve to look at you crazy when you give them they right. That's a Muslim. When you give them the greetings, they look you like, oh, don't say that. Around. The look on their faces, don't say that around these people. Like I. You understand? I was born black in America. Strike one. <laughs> <laughs> I have I have some intelligence. Strike two. Iguodala. Oh, I don't mean to cut you off. But Iguodala. Andre Iguodala was on a podcast, and he was like, they was like, man, you know, you fall down seven times, you get up eight. And he was like, why is that? That don't make sense to get up because you. It don't make sense because if you fall down seven times, how are you gonna get up eight? And then what I said is, black man, we started on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, and to, that's what I don't get about our dean. It's like, the brothers and sisters from overseas want to assimilate so bad. My thing is, I came from this. I'm already assimilated. Right. I don't want to be from overseas. As fucked up as my country is, I'm an American. So I'm a Muslim American. I truly believe, I think it was me and Nafi was talking, and he was talking to some, he was talking about how, like, one of the brothers from the um, Ward of the Muhammad community was talking about how, like, one of one of the scholars from the War of the Muhammad community was talking to another scholar from overseas about madhabs, and the scholar told him, "Maybe y'all need to make your own." And I think that is a good idea. We need scholars from America to find how do we practice this deen within this culture, because this culture is totally different from overseas. Plus, it's 2019. Like I said, I wouldn't have my wife now if I waited on a brother from the mosque to let me marry one of their daughters. Yeah. There's only one brother that came to me and asked me if I was married. And that was, uh, what's the brother's name? Imam Bagby. He did? It was, uh, it was, uh, it was one of the Ram- one of the his first, second Ramadan, I think it was second Ramadan at that Tushada. Yeah, second one. Second Ramadan after took Shahada. And um, we was at Lafayette High School. And I'm in line to get food. And brother was like, you married, brother? And I was like, I'm about to be. Because at that time, I was working right. on getting married to my now wife. But that's the only brother that asked. Yeah. The I only know. other brother that asked, he asked after I got married, was Brother Malik. But I didn't have I didn't have regular run-ins with Brother Malik until after I got married. But I'm pretty sure... They would probably be the only other brother that would have cared. Yeah. Every other, every everybody else for one thing, people from overseas think once you're black and you come to the monastery, you know you got you obviously converted in prison. I ain't never been to prison. Like why do I have to go to prison <laughs> to get the thing? <laughs> and two, there the, the prejudice and the racism within the thing. There is it's there. Right. Even though I love Lexington because it's one of the most diverse Umas, of course it's the only Uma I know. But from what I've seen, it's one of the most diverse because we have almost every ethnicity of um, Muslims other than probably Russian. But I've seen every other ethnicity in Masjid Bilal. Yeah. I remember when I saw my first white Muslim family, it was like seeing Bigfoot. (laughs) 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 For real. I was in the Nation of Islam then, but I just remember we it was uh, it was E prayer. This one that was holding in the KBA um, gymnasium. And um, we just got finished praying. Brother Damon is talking to some some brothers. I really wasn't part of 
um, uh, Sunnah al Jamal. I forgot how to say, but the, you know, the Ummah of the Sunnah at that time, because you know, Nation Islam swears that they're above and they're not a part of, but which they're not. That's a whole other topic. But um, so I didn't really know none of the brothers, but but the Damon knew because of course he talks to him. He's been going to the Marche longer than I have. And um, I don't know, as I looked and I saw a white sister, and I can say sister because she's a sister in the dean. She had like three kids, and they all were in her jab. And then the husband came up, and he was in a full throw with a kufi on. And I had to take a double dog. Is that a white family? <laughs> they Muslim? And I'm like, oh, okay. And also, that was also right when my idea of the nation of Islam started to change, which I really didn't want to be a part of. But at the time, like I said, you want to be a part of something. And the only thing I was a part of was the uh, DNA program. And I was coming from the nation of gods and earth, and I knew I didn't want to leave Islam. But I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know where the masjid was. I just remember one of the brothers came to the meeting. He was in the nation of Islam. They invited me out. I fought him for a while until I found out everything that they know is everything I already knew. So I was like, I can get here easy. Right. Slid right in and eventually slid right out because uh, they got to talk about some off the wall shit. I'm cool on that. Dianetics and all. I'm cool. I'm good. I'm good. Spaceships. And, and if I'm wrong, stop for a lot. Like, oh, I apologize. But at the same time, they don't believe in heaven and hell, so it don't matter no way. And you die, you die, you return to Allah. Dang. And which makes no sense to me because I thought about it like, if there's no heaven and hell, then why am I doing all this shit anyway? Right. Why can't I just do what I want to do? It makes no sense. Yeah. But anyway. But yeah, so the show was pretty good. Yeah, I yeah, this show was lit, man. The show was pretty good. The uncle was off the chain. Bro, I was. I was in a cringe. Like I, I felt uncomfortable. I was I was uncomfortable watching when he took his buddy Steve over to the girls' house and found out they was in high school, like they was underage. Uh, oh, I yeah, was like, oh, this man. is not I felt like I was there. I was like, this is not going this is not gonna end well. It's like this. I felt bad for Rami, but for Steve, yeah, let them Steve. get it, fam. I'm like, why are you I that's the thing, like I don't know. Well, what do you like? The police break in there, and they see Steve, and they see these underage women out. Like, what do you do? What do you do? I don't know. I don't. I don't me you, myself personally. How would you even put him in the back of your car? Me myself personally, if it was me, and you know, Steve is his in real life best friend. For real? It's not just a show. It's his real life best That's friend. So if I pull up and Steve is like who he is. And he's trying to get it in, and I see this underage girl. It's like, look, man, I'm going to leave. Pick like, me up, I'll come back. I don't even know what to do. If as if you was Rami, if I was Rami, I'm leaving. That's what I said. Like, bro, I'm leaving. Like, I can't be here. <laughs> I can't be here. <laughs> <laughs> do you right? Do you text me when you're done? If something happens. I'm the one that's getting charged for <laughs> all of this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, you know yeah, yeah that shit was wild. It was crazy, bro. But yeah. I I want to see more episodes with the uncle, bro. The uncle was hilarious, dude. The, uncle, the uncle's off the chain, fam. The uncle is off the chain, man. He's like, when he was, it was funny because we were sitting there watching, and his Rami sister was in there, and the uncle was looking at her, and my wife was like, Ugh, look at him looking at her like this. And I was like, you know, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm about to watch. And then when he told her to go put some pants on, I was like, that's what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? It's like <laughs> Uncle went playing that shit. It's like, look, I know we in America, but you can put you can put some type of pants on. I ain't gonna say nothing about you not wearing no hijab, but you damn sure will put some pants on. Like it's crazy. It's like you can't, you can only get checked by your parents, and kids don't even let themselves. They don't, they don't even care what your parents, the parents are saying no more. Yeah. So it's like, but like I said, at the same time, they came to America. Yeah, they they not. So like in America. Even though we've already covered it, it's probably the same way overseas. But in America, you get to do what you want to do. It's your right as an American. Like, yes, you're Muslim. You was raised in a Muslim household. But as a woman, I can only imagine 
being alienated because of a job, being alien alienated because all you wear is like loose fitting pants and yeah. skirts and all of that. And like the jokes. The jokes that come with like that. I can only imagine. And that's why like a lot of times when people tell me like you don't know what it is, I've been looking at them like, what the fuck you mean? I gotta walk around in this skin all day. All day. Like I don't get to uh put nothing over this shit. And even if I did, my voice still gives it away. I don't care how white I talk. <laughs> I remember when I was working at uh, I was working in sales over the phone. And I tried to put my white voice on and the sister said, Oh, I know, brother. I said, huh? She said, You can hide it all you want. <laughs> I got you, brother. I'll buy something. <laughs> and I was just like, Ugh, even if I tried to like mask it to put on the 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 bill paying voice, you know what I'm saying? Like it, it's crazy that that that's even a thing. The, the crazy thing is, and you know, I was talking to my wife about this, and I talked to a lot of people about this. Like, in all reality, race does not exist. And I know people would be like, "Oh, Uncle Tom would call me Uncle Tom for one thing." That's actually a good thing to call someone Uncle Tom. He really, really read the story. For two, race is a socio-economical construct that was created to keep people sep- separated. It That's keeps people things. separated. You know what I'm saying? Because when it all boils down, like if I need blood. And another white man, another white woman's blood type is the same as mine. It's going to work if I need the transfusion. Right. At the end of the day, everybody gets put back down on the earth. Right. It's. And when you look at like epigenetics and all of that stuff and, and, and DNA and RDNA and, and ribosomes and all of that, like we all have the same genetical makeup. What makes the difference is the proteins that, that that connect with it. I don't want to get into the whole chemistry with y'all, but nigga, we all the same. That's just where it all boils down to. Unfortunately, because of the way how the media is set up and just socioeconomics as it is, a social ecology as it is, it's easy to separate people by the color of their skin. Plus, the Quran tells you straight up. And I'm paraphrasing because I don't know the actual ayat, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I created you different tribes so you get to know one another. That's the beauty of the diversity. If you made everything the same, where's the beauty at? Nobody wants everything to be the same. That's why we don't want communism. So that's just, I don't know, this is how it is. You hear about the uh, 20 tons of cocaine found on the J.P. Morgan ship? (laughs) No. What? Yeah, I, I I just totally changed the subject. <laughs> so there was a sh- there was a freighter that was seized by U.S. Customs. They had twenty tons of cocaine on it. First of all, from J.P. Morgan Chase. That's my bank. Your neighborhood dope boy. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga ain't twenty tons. You, I- you think he bringing that in, Coach? <laughs> he got. His phone bill and his daughter name. You think he bringing that in? <laughs> 20 tons? Man. If another nigga say there's a war on drugs, smack yourself. 20 tons? And that's by the bank, y'all. Now, someone asked me, are oh, you going to change banks? For what? I ain't paying for the coke. <laughs> I'm going to change banks. Hey, you know what? Me and my father had this conversation a while ago. We was talking about, uh, I think it was talking about Jordan. He was talking about how, like, there was this little campaign they was pushing where like Jordan it Jordan endorses private private um jails, private pri- private pit prisons. And the thing is I said, uh I don't think Jordan even knows. He has someone who handles his portfolio. He has an accountant that handles his portfolio. His and those people put his money in the best stock to make him more money. He don't give a fuck. He's making more money. So how can you blame Jordan for his money being endorsing private prisons? You can't blame you gonna stop buying his shoes because his accountant decided to put his money in the private prisons. Plus, if that's the case, have the clothes we wear, we should be wearing. Yeah, like when you it it just it depends on how far the rabbit hole you wanna go down. Like, yeah. Are you gonna make your own clothes? 
You know what I'm saying? I, I, I stand with Killer Mike when he was talking about how, like, I think he was at a town hall meeting, and he, he said, don't let none of these old black folk talk y'all into going out in the street and getting yourself killed for some type of revolution. Can you plant your own food? Do you shoot a gun every day? Can you hunt? Can you kill your own food? Can you build your own house? You cannot go to war behind enemy lines and use the enemy's infrastructure. Y'all niggas are stupid. I'm just going to be I'm just <laughs> real. Like, and I say that because I used to be that nigga. And one day I had to sit back and really think about like how stupid I was. Yeah, it's tough. You can't, yeah, can't go to war unless you got your money right. And it's not, you can't, you can't use the, it, it, yeah, it's, I mean, and it don't get clearer than what you said. Like, and the thing is, Allah puts you in a situation. It's what you do in the situation that matters. Right. Because, see, none of this happens without Allah's permission. So you can bitch and complain about the quote-unquote white man, the quote-unquote system, and all of that. What are you doing to, to, to make the best out of this situation? They gave you the cards, they dealt the cards, play the fucking game, and try to win. You know what I'm saying? That, that, that's what I had to get with. Like I could sit back and blame people all day, and I'm always be broke and not have nothing. And as soon as I realized, like, it's not, it ain't no time to complain, and I, re- I was watching, a, um, and I was listening to a lecture about, uh, what's his name? Abu Usama Thakbi. And he was talking about how, like, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never complained. Now, there's certain things you can't complain, but com- complain about, but co- to complain for the sake of complaining when shit ain't gonna change, ain't no sense in doing it. You're just wasting time. Right. You're a part of this system. You was born here. Play the game. You learn the game. You learn the rules. You got to be Neo out this bitch. You got to learn the rules and learn how to fucking dodge bullets, man. Like, you ain't gonna last. And at the end of the day, this whole thing ain't gonna last forever anyway. Nope. Right. Plus, on the day of judgment, ain't none of this shit gonna matter anyway. Only thing that's gonna matter is the questions that Allah poses to you. Right. You can't blame nobody else. You can't say, "Oh, uh, the system was broke and the white men and all this and in America." No, that ain't gonna matter. What did you do with the resources I gave you? How many people did you help? How many people did you touch? What did you change? How close was your family? Stuff like that is going to matter. Right. So that's why I don't get into all this. I don't get into it no more. I used to, but it's, it's a waste of time. I wasted years doing that shit all while fucking getting high as a kite. I was stupid, dude. Man, it ain't, man. I was stupid. If I could tell, if I could go back and say something to the younger me, I'd probably go back and smack the shit out and tell him to get his shit together. All this shit ain't gonna matter in the next 15 years. <laughs> for <laughs> real. And I just dip. Leave myself looking at a stupid sitting on the couch high. You walk up to him and smack <laughs> nigga. Ain't none of this shit gonna matter in 15 years. None of it. You ain't gonna be here. This chick you with ain't gonna be with you. The niggas you hanging with, you ain't gonna be with them either. Once you grow up, some of these niggas are gonna stay with it. Yes, some of them, everybody, eventually, if they're working on something, they, they sprout out. They they yeah. spread out. They do their own thing. They don't mean that y'all ain't gonna be close, but you gotta get it's your like, shit together. You go together. You go apart. Just it's tough. Yep. So what? Else? I, so I see you have been in the gym. You try to watch CNN. You watch Rami. You know what what I else? I even downloaded the CNN app. It has uh since then been deleted, but that's just because my storage space is very limited. But uh <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? You get you an I'm trying to But that's one thing. What's up on service you with? Huh? What's up on service you with? I'm with uh Sprint. Sprint, okay. But right now I just I don't know. I'm trying to do a better job of making best use of my time. Yeah. Because right now my time is all over the place. And at the same time, I have no time. So I'm trying to I'm trying to get into a routine. I'm trying to find a way to to be efficient. I'm all about efficiency. Yeah. Yeah, time management is a bitch. 
trying to navigate sleep, prayers, marriage, work, and now you got a baby, so yeah. And like, and then on top of that, you got like, you got family, you got uh, you, yeah, you, you said it work, and it's just. You got, and then you got your own interests, the stuff you want to do, you know what I'm saying? And it's just crazy how, like, you really ain't got no time once you get to a certain age. Yeah, you just, there's, there's never enough time in the day. I think I just got blessed at the beginning of this year with what happened to me and how everything worked out with my current situation because I didn't, I didn't make this happen. It just happened. Yeah. And I took advantage of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, alhamdulillah, my wife had gotten sick earlier this week. And because I'm able to do what I do with my job, I was able to stay here and take care of her. Right. Make sure she was taken care of. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, we losing, out, we losing out on a little bit of money, but that's okay. Like, she was taken care of. Right. And then when she has a surgery, she's going to be off work. I'm going to have to pick up hours. So for about three weeks there, I'm going to be working all the time. But that's okay. You know what I'm saying? That's how these things work. It's a team effort. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, but yeah, in managing time, like, it just, I don't know, man. I, I For one thing, I stopped planning. My, my wife hates it. I stopped planning shit. I just go with it. I have an idea or outline on how my day, week, month might go. But if something don't work out, it just don't work out. Um, I am a firm believer in you make plans and Allah make plans and Allah is the best of planners. Right. Like you could plan all you want. I, you know, I was uh, speaking in Louisville the other day and, you know, I ended, I ended the, um, the workshop by saying at the end of the day, God nor the disease of addiction gives a fuck about what you want. God doesn't care what you want. Allah does not care. And I'm not saying it in a bad way. I'm saying like he has a plan. And right. you're going to fall in line whether you with or without his permission. And you want it to be with his permission. Right. Because it can be like you want you want to get that new car. You want to get it today. Yeah. And I think the biggest thing that taught me that was my mother dying 2011. I wanted to build a better relationship with her. It didn't work out the way I wanted it to. And this whole thing with my, with my wife and I trying to have kids, just we can't. It's over. That really taught me, like, obviously he has something better for me. And I could sit back and feel bad, feel, feel bad about it. I could complain about it. I could cry. I can try to find ways to adopt and all of that. Or... I can just wake up and do what I can do the very next day. And if Allah places a child in our life that we can take care of, yeah. But that's the, we, me, and my, me and my wife talked about adopt, adopting and fostering. That's kind of scary nowadays. This ain't the 1950s, 1960s, where there was a, I guess I'd say a higher moral code in America. And people went, it's crazy. Like, you don't know what you get nowadays. I don't, my biggest fear is being asleep and we fostering a 12, 15 year old and I wake up this motherfucker standing over me right now, man. I, I'm shooting that motherfucker. <laughs> you shot that kid? The fuck I did? Yes, I did. I'm sleeping. This motherfucker standing over me in the middle of the night. He got shot. That's tough. My life is more important at the end of the day. It's self preservation. It's a first law, law of nature, self preservation. Let, let no kid hurt me. It's probably why I ain't here. Shit. Fuck that. But yeah, man, this is how it is. Like, a lie has a plan, and you're going to fall in line. It, you know, um, uh, I, my father even uh, disagreed uh, about it with me. I think because it talks about in the Nation of Gods and Nurses, it talks about uh, man, man carries out the will of a lie whether he knows it or not. And, you know, the whole predestination thing is something that's a part of the dean. Like, you are there, there is a certain timeline you follow. You don't know what it is, but a lot does. 
And my father and a few other people was like, no, you have control of your... No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. You don't have control. You have an idea what you want to do. You have an idea what your purpose is. But at any given time, I mean, it's already written, but at any given time, they could change. What like that. But what you mean? So... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I'm, I'm with you on that. 100%. Because it's like this. When me and my wife got together, we didn't know she had endometriosis. We're thinking we're getting married. We're both perfectly healthy. We're married for a year. We go to the hospital because she throws her back out. We find out she has fluid on one of the fallopian tubes. That's why I said things have changed. We had a plan in our mind of Marriage, house, family. Right. We thought that that was going to work because we love each other. Everything was going good. Job was going good. Like, we think we on the path. Right. And this is the path that Allah wants us to be on because it's going so good. Right. All it took was one trip to the emergency room. And then it was a chain of events. Right. And it seemed like Allah prepared us for that last endo, uh, that last um, in vitro fertilization that didn't, that wasn't successful, then she had a hysterectomy. Like, when we first found out she had fluid on her fallopian tube and they said they had to take one out, that was getting us prepared for the fact that maybe we won't be having a family like we thought. Right. And I, I believe, and I agree with that. And but I don't know what thing, What I'm saying is, as a person out here today, you know what I'm saying, you, you have free will. You can do whatever you please. You know what I'm saying? Allah already knows what we're going to choose or what we're going to do. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when people be like, oh, well, you know what I'm saying? If, if Allah, God made me, made me this way or made, put me here or maybe do this, maybe do that, then why am I to blame for, for what I do? And it's just like, no, you will put here with free will. You can go to the store. You can go out there and eat a tree. But that's on you. Allah knows what you're going to do. He already seen the movie. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now the movie is just playing out. No, I get what you're saying. What I'm saying is when you set out the plan to do a thing, like for instance, it talks, there's an ayah in the Quran that says if all of creation wanted to do harm to you, no harm would come to you unless Allah allows it. Right, and I agree if with that. All, if all of creation, if all creation wanted to help you, no help will come to you unless Allah allows it. Right, nothing can happen so, without the will of Allah. But that's what I mean by like his plan is going to work out whether you have a hand in it or not. You could try to get a job all you want. Right, if it's not you too could, risky, it's, it's not going to happen. But that's, that's what I mean, mean though. That's right. what I mean. I agree with you. That's what I mean. Right. That's what I mean in a, in a nutshell. It's like you can have all these aspirations to be whatever you want to be. Right. If Allah does not want that to happen for you, it's just not going to happen. I just don't want nobody to misconstrue that and think like, oh, then I shouldn't be taking account for anything that I do. No, that's not right. the case. Right. Okay, I see what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I see you, what you're saying. You, do, you are accountable for what you do. You know what, what I'm saying? Is, free will. What I'm saying is don't have expectations on your own ability to do things. Right. Completely. You might be good as hell at doing something, but if Allah does not, does, does not want that for you, it's not going to happen. Right. Like, for instance, I didn't know going on 11 years ago that I wouldn't be making music. Like, before I got clean, that was the goal. We had shows lined up. I was getting better at my craft, getting better at beat making. We had a, uh, we had a manager. We was working on getting a record label. Who's you, a DJ? No, I rap. You rap and make beats, so you was kind of hit before kind of. It was just more so. It, it was just more so. That's right. what because you just indulged in everything. I'm, I'm, I, I love hip hop, right? You know like what I'm saying. It. So it's like I started out in middle school and high school writing poetry. Sophomore year of high school, got with a rap group, learned cadence, learned how to write bars, learned how uh, song structure. Back then, song structure was. Um, intro, intro, it was like intro, verse, hook, verse, hook, verse, outro. Right. Um, now it's just more so. It's like, it's like two it's, minutes. You minutes. get two verses. And that's it. That's because of streaming. But anyway, um, so I was learning all that. I'm learning, you know, and I was getting better at my craft. 
You know, I was getting better at writing complete songs, mm-hmm. getting better at writing club songs versus album songs. Like I had good club concepts. I had a good song that was when I performed it, it was a hit. Right. Um, me and the guys I was working with was getting better and better. We was, was, was on a rise. I got clean, and everything changed. Like my whole attitude. I wanted to, but there was something in me that was just like, it's not. Right. I'm not gonna do it. It wasn't until after I found out Eminem and Crooked Eye and Joe Button and all these other motherfuckers was at this 12 step program still rapping. But by then I, I had lost it. Like I was like, I ain't. No, I can say I lost it. I didn't have the hunger for it. Right. Because I could still sit down and write a song right now if I wanted to. Because I listen to so much music, something that's never going to go anywhere. Right. I just, it's been now, I don't have the time. Or the money, because that shit costs. Now, I mean, no, don't get me wrong, I could probably put my iPad up to this and make some back room shit. But do I really want to put the time in to do that? Plus, rapping is like the NBA, man. Only 0.2% of people make it. Yeah, everybody's trying to get into the league, man. But there's so many more avenues to get this mail, man. Yeah. There's so many avenues, man. Like this, with this streaming, podcasting, YouTube, all this stuff. Like, it, even it, farther than that, like, there's so much. It's just like, man, you ain't got to just pick up a ball, pick up a mic. Yeah. You know what I mean? And even this goes back to what we were just talking about. Like, this is what I, this is what I want to do, streaming. Right. Making content, but that's not, it might not be a part of a lot's plan. Yeah, it feels like it right now because I hadn't time to do it. Right. But then again, it's, it's just, this just might be setting me up with something else. And that's something else I learned. Like, what you're doing in life now might not be what you'll be doing later on. It's setting you up to have the skills to handle something somewhere else. Right. And I, I think part of the reason why I do this as well is because being a part of the 12 step program I'm in, I was told for a long time I speak well. For what I was told before then, because I'm a black man who can speak, and white people are amazed by someone who can use it, that has a vocabulary. Even though I cuss like a sailor, I can throw some loquacious ass words at you, even though that didn't even fit, but it sounded good. <laughs> <laughs> but but, yeah, uh, so. so I was like, well, why not get into content? Why not do a podcast? And so for, for like three years, I was just talking about doing this podcast, and then finally my wife was like, you talking about it, just do it. Man, I Next thing I know, I go from two jobs to one job, right. and I'm like, you know what? As soon as income tax in, we get it, and right. here we are. Right. I had been talking with, with another thing I learned, man. I've been talking, to, I had been talking to people, friends, family about doing different things, doing podcasts, doing TV shows, writing scripts, doing this, but at the end of the day, unless you, like, you know whether they're, whether you're in it or they're in it. Like, you, you can tell, like, okay, this person really wants to do this, or this person really doesn't want to do this. This person want, just wants to be on the backside where all the money comes in and all the, all the success. But at the end of the day, this stuff, this stuff, it takes, it takes a lot of time. Yeah. It takes a lot of effort. You know what I'm saying? Yep. A lot of people don't see the background, what's going on in the background. You know what I'm saying? They not in the gym. You know what I'm saying? They don't see the hours. We don't see the hours Kobe put in the gym. They just, they just got floor seats. And that's, that's what a lot of people just want. They just want the floor seats. They want the floor seats and they want the, they want the pictures. But we out here. We are out here. Like uh, tonight, for instance. I know I got to go work tomorrow, but I'm probably going to stream for about an hour. My wife ain't going to like it. But it's a part of it. Like, you got to put in the work. That's I mean, just where it is. Work, and there's sacrifices to this. You know what I'm saying? And like, especially... My advice to people out there, it ain't like before I got married, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Like I had like my only passion growing up was basketball. Yeah. And so I didn't even reach six foot. So that's out of the question. You know what I mean? Next thing on top of that, a certain period in high school, where is like one of your peak times of finding out what you like to do, what I like to do <laughs> was nothing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Hang out, chill, do the medicinal, and that's it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'll catch you tomorrow. Yep, Repeat. same here. You know what I'm saying? So now, after I'm married, just had a kid, I'm realizing what I want to do. And it's like, on one hand, I'm I'm excited. I'm ecstatic. Like, I'm finally something other than basketball that I like, that I want to do, that I have the ability to do. You know yeah. what I'm saying? 
But at the same time, I don't have you don't have that time when you're married, when you got bills, when you you know what I'm saying, taking care of rent, making payments on this, making payments on that. You know what I'm saying? You got kids, you know what I'm saying? So if you young, if you in your teens, man, just take advantage of staying with your peeps if you got the opportunity. Or if you're privileged enough to stay with your parents, you know what I'm saying? If you're working, that's good too. You know what I'm saying? Kick them something because you know it's rough out here in these streets. Yeah. Uh, and just find out what you like and follow that, bro. Like, not everybody, like, yeah, everybody likes to rap. You know what I'm saying? Everybody likes to hoop. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, you got to find something that works for you. Like, T Pain was like, man, everybody's out here rapping, but ain't nobody out here really doing this singing auto tunes type, type stuff. And that's how he came up. Now look at him. He's yeah. streaming. He be streaming on Twitch. I didn't know he'd be streaming. He'd be streaming on Twitch. But at the same time, you he got enough money to do so. Yeah, you got... I mean, hell, Apple bought him with diamonds, so... It was. <laughs> no, for what, real. He, what, he was on a... Oh, my bad. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. My, my, my thing is, once you find something that you're into, you got to follow it. But at the same time, like, I be I be following these uh, entrepreneur pages on Instagram. And one of the dudes said... I told my son, you don't have, to, don't worry, I don't worry about being top three in your class. You know what I'm saying? Because if you worry, if you do what it takes to be top three in your class, you're not going to be able to learn other things. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's not, there's nothing wrong with being in the middle of a pack. You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. once you specialize, you know, then of course you yeah, want to be the best. It's like it, what I have to understand is I don't have to be the best. I just have to be very good at what I am doing. Right. Very good and very distinct. Because you gotta understand, <laughs> most entrepreneurs are C and C plus students. Right. They, they just took advantage of the opportunity. That have A and A plus employees. Right. Steve that, Jobs wasn't when you, making them when phones. When you think man. about that shit, Steve Jobs ain't making them phones. <laughs> when you think about that shit, that blows your mind. Like. Most entrepreneurs, most and um, most entrepreneurs didn't even graduate high school. There's a lot of people out there. If you if you go to the next Wikipedia page, the proof is in the pudding. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but T Pain don't want for nothing. That nigga, you know that song was supposed to be given to Nelly, Apple Bottom. Was it? Because remember, Nelly had the Apple Bottom. Right, right, right. right. So he pitched it to Nelly. Nelly said the song was stupid. Flo Rida hopped on it. That shit went diamond. I mean, Nelly already has the money, yeah, but I know yeah. he was still kind of yeah, sick. Like, it's like when Hulk Hogan missed out on the George Foreman girl. Stupid. We got one of his hurricane shakes in here somewhere. <laughs> the Hulk Hogan hurricane shake. I looked at that shit and was like, you should have went for the grill. Right, right. you should have went for the grill, man. <laughs> <laughs> should have went for the grill. That's tough. But yeah, it's Opportunity just, missed. When you, man, it's hard to realize an opportunity, man. And I'll be talking to my wife about this because I'll be like, you know what I'm saying? I'll be making prayer. I'll be making my duas for different things throughout life what I would like to achieve or have access to or this, that, the other. And it's like, you can't really tell sometimes when you got an opportunity or you got a blessing coming your way. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes you can miss opportunity or not be appreciative for a blessing because you're not, not, you know, not vigilant enough. And that's just... Or your ears ain't to the ground. Like, I try... That's part of the reason why I don't plan. Because if I plan... And I get fixated on something. Right. I obsess about it. I put blinders on. And then I not only can I, can I not see opportunity, I don't hear when Allah's telling me something. Right. You know what I'm saying? I don't hear it. Like, for instance, Friday, I'm sitting here, turn my Xbox on, my father calls. I'm about to hit the bitch button. I was. <laughs> I was about to. Because it's my day off. Right. I don't do shit on Fridays. Y'all know I don't do shit on Fridays. Why are you calling me? But something in my spirit said answer. Plus, I'm trying, I'm doing my best to at least with my immediate family keep those family ties. Right. Because that's important. That's something that you're going to be asked about with the day of judgment. So I've done my best not to hold grudges. Right. uh, To allow my family to be who they are. And if he was calling with some bullshit, let him say what he needed to say and get off the phone. Well, come to find out, I had to speak, uh, what was it, Saturday, and I accepted it, even though I really didn't want to ride the little one and do it. Speak for what? Speak to it. Basically, in the, in the program, people tell their stories or tell 
um, their experience. So you would like, like, you went up to Louisville to have one of those? Yeah. It was like, it was having a function and they have different speakers at different times. I'd be at 545 and my topic was growing pains. So I just shared what me and my wife was going through. Because right. that's a growing pain. Right. That's something I'm going through and it's painful. Right. You know, there's a lot of times I feel by myself. I'm not going to give the whole. Right. So your dad called you that thing? Yeah. yeah. Someone called him and asked for me. So he called me and was like, can I give you your number? Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I needed that. Right. I needed that so I can release and get that off my chest. Right. It also gave me an opportunity. They're going to have a convention coming up here soon, and they might call me to go up and do a workshop. I usually go to the convention every year, but it's always a good thing to be of service to other addicts in need because my story can help somebody else. Right. Um, and then Monday, my wife has that incident. Tuesday, my father calls like, hey, you at home? I'm like, uh. Yeah, and he's like, well, someone tried to scam my grandmother in D.C. They called saying they was me, and they needed three thousand dollars because they needed bail. I was coming from a funeral, and I needed bail because I was in jail. So my grandmother calls my aunt in D.C., and then my grandmother calls my sister, who's in North Carolina, and says that I got pulled over for a DUI. Yada, yada, yada. So my sister calls my father crying because she think I threw away all my clean time right. because of the incident my wife's going through. Right. And then when I call my sister, I'm sitting here with the Xbox controller in my hand. Right. I FaceTime her right. so she can see it's me. You know what right. I'm saying? And she's like crying. I'm sorry. I'm like, it's all right. You ain't got to worry about me, is it? But what it did was if I didn't answer that phone, right, for one thing, I wouldn't see that my sister's actually proud of the clean time I had. Right. And I have been struggling with calling my grandmother in D.C. because she has ovarian cancer. Mm. And she's, my grandmother's in age. So she'll start out as the sweet grandma. Then she goes into the, I'm going to talk about what happened 30 years ago. Right. When I didn't have nothing to do with it. I'm six, seven years old. And start, and I ain't got time for it. So I've been trying to hold off on that shit. But it gave me an opportunity to talk to my grandmother again. And like I said, I'm trying to keep the family ties. Had I been obsessed about some shit? Had I had a plan that day and ain't nobody stopping my plan, I'd have missed all that because I would have definitely disregarded it. Right. You know what I'm saying? But that's what I mean by I don't make plans. Like I try to keep myself readily available to be a service to my family and to others to the best of my ability. And you know, my father called today. He's in North Carolina with my sister and he needed some money. I sent it to him. Didn't really want to, but he needed it. Right. I mean, the nigga that took care of me most of my life. So I sent it to him. Right. And he's gonna pay me back. Well, he's mailing me a check, which I can cash on the first. He gets he gets a disability from the army. So I'm getting it back, but it's a simple fact that had I been obsessed like today about streaming, I would have never picked up the phone, never answered the text message. Because once I get locked into some shit, I'm, ain't nobody stopping me. Yeah. And, and you know, so I, I try to be as flexible as possible. And when I am flexible, I, can, I get to see the opportunities. I get to hear a lot when he's speaking to me to be of service or to be there for somebody. So, yeah. You keep looking down on your phone. That's just a, yeah, you know. Gotta <laughs> check on him. <laughs> <laughs> gotta keep hitting these checkpoints. Right. But, uh, yeah, man. Stream yeah. worked out pretty good yesterday and done day. Yeah, man, that was great. Twelve followers in a week, that's not bad at all. Right. Uh, I wanna keep it going. I don't know if I'm gonna stream this uh man twenty or not. I'm so trash. Just stream you it, said, man. You said you wanted to see it. Just stream it, bro. So. I've been thinking about getting either like an NHL or FIFA game just to stream because it's like it's different, it's fun. Like yeah. when I first started playing Fortnite, it was fun. Like I was terrible. Like I'm still bad, but I was terrible. Like I, I didn't even know I had to land. I didn't even know where to land. I accidentally fell in the water and died the first time. Cause I thought I was going over there, so I was waiting. I'm like, where's everybody at? Like, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, yeah, I fell in the water and died. But yeah, streaming something new, streaming different things, I'm definitely into. But at the same time, I like. I'm starting to like to play games more just for the. Just for the fun of the game. Well, you know what I'm saying? That's what I think. That's why I think our streams are doing so well. Also, because we're not trying to entertain. 
It's more so we're streaming and we're having fun. Right. We're just hanging out. We're chilling. Yeah. Like, I'm not trying to... Because I used to just be so competitive on games. But yeah. now I'm just trying to be... Just just trying to enjoy the game. Just trying to enjoy the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, part of the reason why I'm streaming Madden is because I used to be a Madden fanatic. Yeah. I but it's like I haven't played Madden since Madden 10. That's when uh, Palomalu and Fitzgerald was on the cover. Yeah. And it's like... I remember. When, it's funny because I started playing and I, the old feeling came back. Yeah. You know the old feeling when you, the football feeling. Right. You used to dive and catch shit over the couch. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, talking about? Like, being a little room, talking about, oh, he got one. He didn't start moving. I can't you touch down. Like, diving over the couch like I'm diving over the goal line. Like, that, that feeling came back. I'm like, I miss this shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? I haven't played Madden. But I'm trash, though. Seriously, since like PS2. I am super trash. I'm, I'm, I'm trash. Offense, that that's like riding a bike. But the defense, the game has changed so much. Bro. User, <laughs> the game has changed so much. I'm sitting like, okay, cover two zone. Okay, I know what cover two is, but fuck, I can't remember. Like, so it, it's gonna be fun getting back into it, remembering shit. I know what nickel three four all that is, but none of the plays are listed like that anymore. It's just like. I don't know. So it's going to take some time to get back in. Plus, the, the controls have changed. Right. All of that. There's so much more to do. Uh, so I downloaded Madden 19 just so I can actually play the game and get a feel of it before I spend money on Madden 20, which I probably won't spend no money on Madden 20 until after I get 2K. 2K come first. So yeah, 2K coming out. Since, since 19 is free, I went ahead and downloaded that. I, I think I got less than eight hours of play time on Madden 20 because they give you 10 hours of trial time. Right. So uh, if everything's cool tonight, nine times out of ten, I will stream about an hour. So it. so what do you think with 2K20? Because I know you, we, I, like, we still got to wait to see what they do with the my player, with the builds. But uh, what way are you linking? What do you think? I'm. De- I told you I'm definitely going. Like, I'm a guard, man. Like you didn't see my. You see me work. You see me work. You see me work, my nigga. You see, I get you know buckets. Who I am? You see, you I get know buckets. Who I am. <laughs> so I mean, but nine times out of ten, it's gonna be some type of pure shot creator or playmaker shot creator because that's that's my niche. Right. Um. And I know those two particular builds. A lot of people. Don't use them or don't know how to use them. Everybody, everybody goes towards the meta. So at the beginning of the year, everybody will be making builds. Of course, YouTube's gonna make builds. They're gonna suggest certain builds. One build is gonna be OP, or two builds are gonna be OP, and that's where everybody's gonna switch to. This year it happened to be like three of them. It was the sharpshooting playmaker, the pure stretch, and the lockdown. Like those are the three builds that. Oh, and the pure cross scores, you know how to use them. Which I don't see that many of them on Xbox, but I'm in on PlayStation. Sharpshooting, it was a sharpshooting playmaker, lockdown, um, stretch bigs, and this, those are the four builds that people just win because you don't need any skill to play with them. A seven foot pure uh, stretch big, like all you got to do is left, right cheeks, behind screens, and just shoot. Sure. Like right. lockdowns, they stand next to you and they drop your attribute. Then with the playmakers, if you know how to dribble, the sharp shooting playmakers, if you know how to dribble, they're gonna dribble and wait till they get left, right, and they're gonna shoot. Like that's why I be boxing them niggas up the way I do. So it depends on the meta, but for the most part, since we get in the demo, we're gonna get to play. We're, we're gonna get to try out multiple builds. Definitely gonna start out with the pure shot creator and the playmaker shot creator. I'm praying that a pure shot creator has. A decent speed with ball and ball control. I know everything else is going to be all right. Does the speed boost make it a break for you with the pure shot rate? Yes, with the pure shot rate it does. Um, with I think with any guard it does. Um, if you play like I play, if you are a playmaker, mm-hmm. um, if you're a sharpshooter, not really because all you got to do is catch and shoot. The badges is what makes the sharpshooter so OP because they catch and shoot. On Hall of Fame, D Branch that are on Hall of Fame. Like, right. you don't really need, all you need to do is be open when someone passes you the ball. But, um, 
the speed boost makes it a break it for me is because for one thing, I don't do the whole momentum, the momentum crossover and the spins and all of that. I need to be able to beat you off the dribble once I make that cut. If I can't boost out of that, I'm no good because I can get you off balance. But if I can't get that speed once I get you off balance, I'm dead in the water. And I, honestly, that's what makes good guards is the misdirection. You know what I'm saying? Um, good, good scoring guards. I mean, of course, you got the Andre Phillips of the world who just that yeah, set people up. Post you up. But that's not the way. That's not the way the game's played. Unfortunately, the way 2K's played is not that realistic to the point to where um, you can have those builds. Yeah. Trust me, if I can have a um, 6-1 guard, I would have him. But the way the game's set up, I'm fast, but the bigger builds, like I can't really get to the rim. Or if they, the way they have people jump 10 feet across the court, yeah, you can't get a shot off. Can't get a shot off like I want to. Even though I know some people who know how to play with those small guards, like it's Reese, his guard is his his original build that he got the ninety five with was a six two playmaker shot creator. So it's possible, and I thought about doing that too. Like next year, just going ahead and getting out there and playing with the randoms. And if y'all are home, we will play. But you know, this this playing on Xbox and how well I've been doing just reminded me like. I, I am good enough to play. Right. You know what I'm saying? It just PlayStation, man, they, they whine so much it makes you not want to play because you get out there and they don't know who you are and they just complain every time you make a mistake. Yeah. Or you don't pass on the ball. Right. But they can shoot the craziest shit and uh, you, you know, man, you know, I get a headache, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're playing with a pure, pure, um, Pure stretch four the other night, he could shoot to save his fucking life, and it was giving me a headache. Like, it gives me a headache just to think about it now. Like, really? why do you have a pure sharp, pure stretch four, and I pass to you wide open, and you can't hit the shot? Like, yeah. what's the point in having a pure stretch four? Yeah. Like, I do everything in my power to make sure you get the ball when it's open. Do, all you gotta do is just shoot your shot. <laughs> You make your shot. You chose that shot. <laughs> you chose that build. Like you know you're supposed to get the shot. I rely on you. If you right. out there and you're out there on the island, no one's there, and you shoot it, and you put up a house. That's right. You're random, and it says your build is a pure stretch. It's like okay, that's the only thing I know about you. Is it, you supposed to shoot? And I'm out there on a play to make a shot red and shooting better than you. That's a problem. So, yeah, that's part of the reason why I'm sticking with the playmaker shot creators, too, is because, like I said, the attributes itself is the same as a sharpshooting playmaker. The only thing the sharpshooting playmaker has is their badges are one tier higher. Mm -hmm. So his catch and shoot is silver, his deep range dead eye is silver, his limitless, limitless range is silver, all mine are bronze. And I'm only like one or two attribute points below. That's why I like I, Why would I make that? I can't drive. Like, I like dunking on people, too. I might not get no contact on but I ain't scared to go to the rack. I'm going. <laughs> yeah. That's probably because I'm going to make this 6'5", too, because that's 6'4". On PlayStation, you can't get blocked. I'm going to make this 6'5", and make it work. And um, Also, there's a, when you make it, build, there's a sweet spot when it comes to, like, weight, yeah. height, all of that. Yeah, and eventually... You can hit you can hit six ten, six nine, but eventually you'll see like, oh, okay, that's when the drastic change is, and I'm close to the height, I'm close to the weight yeah. where I need to be to do this X Y. Because I realize, like, for instance, with the guards, I try to keep my strength at sixty, so I will lower my weight until the st the strength is sixty, but that also takes up my speed with ball, my acceleration, and my lateral quickness. Right. So I try to have my speed with ball. I want my speed with ball and my speed to be just about the same. I right. want to move just as fast without the ball as I do with the ball. Right. That's another reason why I hope that the pure shot creator has a higher ball control. Because the pure shot creator, he can have like an 88 speed, but his speed of ball, speed with ball be like a 78. It's like, it's a drastic difference. Yeah. I'm speeding past you when I ain't got the ball, but when I got the ball slow, right. I, just, I want every, I want my speed to be pretty much the same across the board. 
I'm not too much worrying about shooting because the way 2K is set up, you can have a 70 shot and you won't hit if you open it. If you know your shot. Yeah. Oh, no, my God. <laughs> dude, don't get me started on that. But, yeah, yeah, I wanted to tear it up today. And I, I, I saw takeovers on. I sent him a message. They have a solid three. He never sent me a message back. So I just said, fuck it. I'm just going to grind on this uh, playmaking shot creator. But uh, it's been an hour and 39 minutes. I don't know. This man got to get to his family. My wife will be off here in about 10 minutes. So, and I, honestly, I probably need to start streaming before she gets home. This guy, you saw so him already streaming when she walks in the door. Yeah. <laughs> you know what time it is. <laughs> um, and there should be no background noise in this one, thank goodness. So, I'll be able to um, mix this down tomorrow while I'm at work. And go ahead and get it up on Pipple and get it on YouTube. And keep hounding um, Apple and Spotify. And in, in, eventually, inshallah, we'll have enough of a catalog. And we can start putting the links on Facebook and Instagram and all of that. Um, and once this stuff is over with my wife, I'll start using social media more. But my wife had surgery on the 14th. And the after effects of the incident that happened Monday is still um, lingering, so I must be my main focus besides content is making sure she's all right. Yeah. But once she's feeling better and we get past that, then I'm definitely hopping into the social media because my um, 2020 is going to be it's going to be lit. I think I'm going to use the eyeglasses emoji for 2020, like 2020 vision. <laughs> yeah, I thought of that myself. See what I did there? 2020, 20, anyway. But yeah, um, definitely going to start posting more. Um, inshallah, in 2020, we start getting rolling and at some point start making some type of residual income. Inshallah. Inshallah, that's the goal. But, so I'm Lego Rock until I hear about the cartoon. Thank you all for tuning in. And we out this big.